Good morning, folks. Starting with a paper I was still trying to fully digest after two reads, unlocking the patterns and drift of Earth's geomagnetic field, including high variation in the Atlantic region where the ultra-weak magnetospheric anomaly, often called the South Atlantic anomaly, can be found. The paper is not focused on that region. Instead, they're using seismic waves traveling through the core to ascertain why and how we have that drift. I at least recommend the abstract and wonder what you think they mean when they say the inner core must be in a state of differential growth rather than growth and melting induced by convective translation. Pretty good article tracking chapter 2 of Starwater. It was released at the start of October. And for those who have seen it, this is a rocky body, not a gas giant, or a moon, or a super earth. And what did they use as a tracking marker for water from what I'm 99% sure was deep space spectrometry? Oxygen. That's right, and star water watchers have a pretty good idea why. Coming to comments, we're at Bruce Gary's website. In a harmony of imagery and humility, he clarifies his positions, possible confusions, and what he thinks is happening with ISON. As always, you're encouraged to see the site yourself, specifically today, the clarifications and caveats. Now to get a bit of my grumpy out. As always, the missing Soho images are back a day later, highly edited, with light discontinuity as glaring proof of their censorship. Yesterday on Dr. Tony Phillips' spaceweather.com, there was a direct link to the censored C2 images with the entrance of the comet into the frame removed. Good morning, Dr. Tony Phillips. Have you noticed the missing Lasco frames for sun divers and big CMEs, and only then? Have you not seen the jumps and light shifts and stars out of phase proving that something is hidden? I know you see it, sir. Say something. Kicking it to the tropics watch where India is on deck this weekend for a significant storm. You got two of those just east of the Philippines, the first heading right over them and then straight west while the trailer is forecast to swing significantly north towards Japan. Development off the coast of Mexico is likely to be named this weekend and will keep the coast on watch. Meanwhile, the Atlantic development still has a very long way to go. Taking a look at coronal hole power. Still weak as can be on the left, the Earth facing side, with major power revealing itself on the backside up north, away from Earth. We saw the deflation of the larger umbral field yesterday and still have not seen a significant bounce back, and so as we'd expect with the fading power, no significantly large quaking. Greece is indeed having a minor uptick the last 24 hours and a few hundred miles out to sea. We got a registered 6.0 near Japan, but that's barely news on the Ring of Fire. Sun is a bit of a prankster, so we have these diabolical active regions facing Earth. Both have delta class danger, are complexing, and capable of M or even X class flares. So when the GOES X ray flux began showing an M flare this morning, we expected to see that blast Earth facing, but no. This eruption occurred behind the northeastern limb, remember east and west are flipped looking at our star, and even from out of view we registered as M-class, it's the type of thing that might have been X-class if it had been facing Earth. As it is, the sun is still highly active, satellites are updating now, so you, right now, have access to more updated images than these. In addition to the return of flare danger, that coronal hole power is of utmost importance to monitor when those openings are facing Earth like they are here. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.